So, Tom, how did you become a mathematician? Well, um, my my father and sort of my mother are mathematicians, so you know I, that was um, probably something that you know, got me certainly open to the idea of being a mathematician when I was a, a, a young kid. Although, in some sense, quite um, one thing that strangely had a, a lot to do with it was that my uh, I, mean, I, I used to do math concepts contests when I was in high school and enjoyed them. But then, um, you know, it, in the U.S. they used to do these aptitude tests. So they would, um, you know, you'd get this test which would suggest what your career paths might be. And, um, you know, firemen, not very good. None of it. And then the thing that I, I scored very high at was theoretical physicist. You know, which I, I didn't really appreciate that you could do as a paid job. So somehow that, you know, that, that got me thinking about it a bit more. Okay, so so it was really uh, why why did why did it end up being math and not physics? Well, I I when I, I was an undergraduate at MIT and I took um, you know took a lot of math and a lot of physics classes and. The thing that I always got struck by was that in physics, the truth was quite murky, as far as I could see. I mean, you you know, you'd often have these, you know, sometimes I, you know, we'd do something in the in a physics class. I remember taking quantum mechanics at some point, and um, you know, there's some ridiculous argument about whether polar coordinates meant that particles couldn't have negative r. And I thought, you know, it's just a coordinate system. It doesn't even make sense as a question. Why are we discussing this? I mean, you know, so I, I like the precision that mathematics has. In mathematics, you know that it's true and it's not true because somebody tells you it's true, it's true because you, you know. And, with, and at what point did you know that you want to make a living on it? Well, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, so after finishing up at MIT, I went to grad school at Berkeley, and you know, obviously at that point, I was already thinking, you know, that I would make a living of it. Although, I have to say, I, I was quite, you know, surprised that eventually things went as well as they did. I thought it would end up being, you know, teaching math at a, at a college, and I would be quite happy doing that. I didn't think the research would go so well that I would, you know, be back at MIT at some point and, and uh, keep going like that. So. Okay. so have you ever thought about drifting into the industry? A lot of people do that nowadays. Not, not really. I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, on the one hand, you know, at, at MIT we're paid well enough. It's okay. Um, I can't complain about that, and um, also I, I really like doing it. I don't, I wouldn't want to do something else if I you know, didn't have to. Yeah. Okay. So as, as you said, you struck a gold mine with your with your your subject theory, among other things. And uh, how did you get your uh, inspiration to to all this uh, math? Is there some particular place you go hide in, in the corner and uh, and wait until it pops up? Uh, no, I, you know I think a, a lot of it's just trying to pay attention to what's what's going on. I mean, it's, uh, you know, somehow the thing that one thing that really struck me uh, is that um, I mean, as I kept going on in mathematics, is how you know, on the one hand, you know, we as, as a group, mathematicians have learned a tremendous amount. The, amount of, the body of knowledge that a mathematician ought to know is is it's quite, you know, uh, daunting at, at, from some point of view. And and yet, we don't know that much. There's a lot more to know. There's always, you know, it, it, I think it's it's very important as you learn stuff to really, you know, take each piece of knowledge to the extent that you can, and you know, try and figure out. A little bit different way of looking at it. If you keep keep at it, then eventually you start, you know, to see enough things that people haven't seen yet. 
and uh, this is also what collaboration with other mathematicians. Yeah, and of course, I mean, I, you know, I've done uh, <coughs> most of the stuff that I'm well known for. I've done with Peter Kronheimer, and you know, we just we have a very somehow a very good collaboration. You know, we sort of bring a rather different set of set of tools to to what we do, and you know, when one of us gets stuck, the other one seems to know something. So. No. It's been going well for a long time. <laughs> um, talking about uh, geometry and mathematical physics, is there one particular problem that you would say, this is really what we should aim at solving? Well, that's, that's hard to say. I mean, uh, I think, um, you know, in some sense, in fact, I, I don't think it's such a good idea to aim at problems. You should, you know, although, you know, obviously, you know, with, with, with Peter and, and there was other things that um, other mathematics I've done, you know, I've solved, happened to be involved in solving a lot of uh, important problems, but the, the goal wasn't in particular to solve them, but, the, you know, they're sort of, you know, developing say the mathematics around gauge theories that in itself was interesting and then you know then you but it somehow the uh, the say the problems in topology in some sense they're a, a foil for trying to think harder about gauge theory you know there's some you're studying what these strange connections are doing and then you see all of a sudden that you know if they did this thing then you might be able to say something interesting about topology so they the, the, the topology is more of you know um, it, it, it's a little carrot that keeps you keeps you moving and trying to understand the, the tools that you're that you're working with better is there some particular path you can see that uh, mathematical physics is, is going uh, towards these days or that you want to emphasize well, as the, where the future lies? Well, you know, uh, I think that, that there's sort of um, you know, these days I, I see more and more young people uh, being quite fascinated by the formal aspects of the story and they're not learning as much of the geometry as the kids in my day did. And, well, being from the old guard, I think that's not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so back to basics, back to geometry. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's, you know, I, I think the, the more formal stuff hasn't proved to be a, a hugely fruitful in doing other stuff than, I mean, the formal stuff seems quite interesting, but, it, you know, it hasn't had a, a, a lot of applications to topology, say, I mean, some, but not. I don't think it's been nearly as interesting as, as what's happened from the perspective of gauge theory or, you know, I mean, a, a Perlman's work is, of course, an even better example where it has nothing to do with any of the formal stuff. It's an understanding, you know, in that case, Ricci flow, understanding these PDEs that manifolds in low dimensions carry and are, are particularly rich. Uh, so, back to a bit about uh, your personal view upon math. Um, what is your best experience in mathematics? Well, the, the best, you know, I think um, the, the first time that I proved a really great theorem, I, I remember being elated for a couple of weeks. I mean, it was amazing. And, you know, these days, it, you know, still theorems keep coming, but it, it they're, you know, the first one was the best one. <laughs> so, um, and you remember the exact time and date where? Uh, well, I mean, it? you know, I mean, that was a that was an inst that that was um, when when uh, when Bob Gomp and I, um, I realized that there were uh, homotopy K three surfaces that weren't amongst Kadira's um, uh, complex surfaces, so we uh, could prove it. You know, with, that they're really interesting four manifolds that nobody had ever, of a sort that nobody had any, ever seen before. And and um, you know, I remember, you know, I, I gave a, that happened at the, it was a, 
anthropology conference at McMaster in 1990, I think it was. And uh, I gave a lecture about how you compute, can compute some of the Donaldson invariants for K3 surfaces. And um, after the lecture, Bob came up to me and said, but what, why don't you just do those log transforms in this direction instead of this direction? W would that do something? And I said, oh, well, yeah. And then that was, you know, that was it. So it was. Um, so do you have a, some sort of mathematical idol that, or mathematician that you uh, are especially encouraged by or, or knew about him, when well, you were a young student? Or? Well, you know, I mean, obviously I was, I was a Cliff Tab student and I, I he, you know, he, he is quite an amazing mathematician. There was a lot of, I mean, I wouldn't say fun. Um, to work with him, but I, 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 you know, I've learned a tremendous amount of mathematics from from him and his work, and um, there's still more, a lot more that I could learn. And of course, at Tia was also when I was young, it was a big inspiration and singer and all those the, the guys that everybody else was impressed with. What what is most surprising to you about math? Is there some something that is surprising? Well, is it a piece of mathematics, or you know, I think well, I mean it, it. It does surprise me how you know on the one hand how much as a as a group mathematicians know and how much we we don't. I mean, there really is always um, you know somehow a, a lot more interesting stuff to do and. Um, but it, I mean, it is quite shocking that, you know, the Poincaré conjecture is now a theorem. I mean, uh, I think, you know, as far as anybody knew until Pearl won this paper, nobody had any idea if anybody was going to prove it. And then, but there it was. So is, uh, last question, is there a single piece of mathematics that you really wanted to say, I wish I had proven that? Hmm. Well, you know, really elegant thing or, or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm extremely impressed with the work that Ajvath and Zabo and those guys have done, and in particular, the um, um, the re recent work where they've actually made the invariance combinatorial. That's a you know. I I love to be able to do that. That's a fantastic piece of work. And close to what I would, you know, I should have been able to do it. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tom.